Hello, I'm Vince Pizzat, and today we're going to rebuild an inch and a quarter auto air valve. So let's get started. What are the parts that we'll actually need? We have an impact to cut down on our time, an assortment of wrenches, a flathead screwdriver, and a service repair kit for an inch and a quarter or inch and a half standard four bolt auto air valve. The repair kit comes with a schematic. New diaphragm, an assortment of bushings and o rings, rubber bushings, two brass washers, and two replacement nuts, and one smaller o ring. So let's get started. Okay, as you see when the top housing comes off, there's a brass breather vent, a spring cap, which does have an O-ring underneath, but typically does not need replaced. And you see the diaphragm. So this is where you're going to want to inspect for any kind of wear or tears in the diaphragm. Um, you'll notice sometimes it's bubbling up or maybe it's just a stress crack. Uh, any leaks in this can cause the valve to function improperly. Um, how you take it off is you put a flathead screwdriver in the center of the bolt. And you walk the nut off, which a lot of the times is very tight and tricky to do. The nut is purposely threaded stiff by tolerances. Keep that nut from backing off. You want to be very careful not to mess up the threads on the post. I see a lot of times customers will say that they can't get this exact nut back on and the reason for it is when it's under extreme pressure and you put a flathead screwdriver on it it tends to mushroom the end of the post. So once we get the nut off, you will notice a brass washer or a copper washer, a big flat washer to pinch the diaphragm, the diaphragm itself, another big flat washer, and another copper washer. So once you get to this point we're going to get a wrench and we are going to walk out the center assembly of the valve. You want to be very careful with this one as well. If you strip out this nut then you're buying a brand new valve. This one was very tight. So once you pull out this assembly, you're going to notice that you have the top cap with a center O-ring and what the plunger looks like. Um, if you have blow-by on an auto air valve, you'll notice that the seat here on the base has a big gouge in it, so you, uh, you'll lose air through there. So uh, the process from there is you continue breaking this seat down and it's a lot more easy to do in the vise. But today we were doing it on the table. And this nut will come off stiff as well. The two replacement nuts you get in the rebuild kit are this bottom nut and the upper nut, which is here. A little tricky, but
Uh, you'll see there's nothing left really on the inside of the valve. You can replace this race here in the bottom uh, if needed, but typically there's nowhere on the internal there. So once we get to the bottom, you will notice that there is a assembly with a flat washer. And once you pull the smaller washer off, you'll see that the rubber puck, this is a new valve, so the rubber puck's in very good shape, sits in a groove here, and you can pop it out. Like so. So this will be what's worn out most of the time, or hole in the diaphragm. We'll set that aside. So we'll go right into rebuilding, and we are going to put the new puck in the smaller brass washer. Uh, the post is two different sizes, so you can't mess it up. And we're going to use the new nut with an eye lock. I found it's easy to just hold this assembly in your hand like this. You get your wrench right and set it right into place. You want to make sure this is good and snug, but again, be very cautious that you're using the proper size screwdriver because the flathead groove here really messes up easy. So once we get that assembly tight, we have now have a new washer. We can move on to the center puck. There are two O-rings on this. Get cleaned up here. There's one on the very face, smaller, or skinnier, bigger O-ring. So we'll go ahead and get that replaced. Like so. And then internally, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on the camera, there is a center O-ring. And how we get this out is you take a right angle pick tool and you walk this one out and then shove it back in to the bottom side. This is a new valve, so we don't need to destroy the O-ring in replacing that. But you just simply walk it out, walk it around, and then put the new one in and shove it in and help the O-ring sit in the proper place. From there, we're going to um, re-slide the top puck on the piston. Um, typically, you want to make sure there's grease or lubrication here, no foreign debris. And we are going to install this back. So these are very fine threads. We want to make sure that you do get it started before you tighten it up. It doesn't have to be crazy tight, but it does have to seal with the O-ring at the base. And then from there, we are going to start rebuilding the top section. So brass or copper washer. I have something snagged up on the valve here. You want to make sure that nothing like this happens to you when you're rebuilding it. Um, looks like a piece of the copper washer actually had came apart and ended up on the threads. So that would allow the uh, valve to not function properly or seal properly and you would get blow by leak. So once we have that done, inspect the flat washers, make sure you get a good smooth side to go against the rubber so it doesn't wear a hole. The new diaphragm, big washer again, you want to make sure it's clean as well. New brass washer. A new nylock nut for the top. So if you did it properly, this should screw right on. If you use too small of a screwdriver, you will notice you're not going to be able to get the nut started. And unfortunately, either file it and clean it up or get a whole new rebuild kit. The newer kits are coming with a new post, so that helps a lot.
as soon as you can get a bigger screwdriver onto the center port, you're going to want to, so that you don't mushroom the post. And this one's pretty important that it has to be snug because you're pinching the diaphragm between these two washers and that's what makes your seal. So if this does come loose or you pull your valve apart and you see that it's just loose, you may be able to just tighten this up and fix your issue. So from there, we're going to take our spring, put it back here, take the top plate. Um, this will bolt on either way and it will work either way, but there is a right and wrong way. So you'll see the flat edge on the top and the curved edge on the side. Bolt holes do line up, same way with the gasket. So you just wanna make sure it's all aligned. And then we will bolt the top back on. You will notice we do have some gaskets left over. The smaller one goes underneath this cap. The tiny one goes in the center puck. Definitely want to make sure you start all the nuts by hand. And we are going to tighten everything up. And there you have it. We just rebuilt a four bolt auto air valve. Thanks for stopping and I hope this helps you in the field.